Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Behind the Closed Doors. Today the workshop light control and well, it's nice weather outside, so let's go. Now the workshop light control is all about controlling your light. It's based on the workshop essential lighting techniques. You can download that as a tutorial, we'll leave the link below. It's going to be about Rembrandt lighting, uh, everything about accent lighting and of course also butterfly lighting. So we're going to do all the famous lighting setups and different backdrops of course and explaining a light fall off. So it's going to be awesome. So join us for today's episode. If you like what we do, subscribe, like and hit of course that like button very very hard. We really liked it. And most of all tell other people about our channel. Are you ready? Let's go. And of course, Chewie is already waiting for the attendees, right, Chewie? Are you looking forward to today? Woof! Probably. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking me how I like the Air Direct from Terra Tools. And as you know, I'm always honest, we are the distributor for Terra Tools in the Netherlands, but if I don't like a product, I'm not going to say I like it. In this case, I absolutely love it. The real reason actually why we want to do wireless is not essentially in the studio, because in the studio we can shoot by wire. But it's mostly on trade shows, location workshops, it's just a drag to bring your cables with you and a laptop. It's much better to shoot to a pet, to an iPad or an Android tablet or whatever, and just do it wirelessly. Now, and one of the main big advantages of this system is actually that the RAW files are on your card and in the zone you can set up that you only shoot 2 megapixel JPEGs to a tablet and for example 16 megapixel JPEGs to a computer. And this is also one of the nice things I like about this one. When you connect it to for example Capture One or Lightroom, it sees the camera as it is connected by a USB cable. So you don't have to do anything else, just run a little app on the back and it acts like you're connected to a USB cable. So no hot folders none of that stuff it's just the way that you used to work and that's the cool thing because you don't want to change settings in your camera you don't want to change settings in your software or change your workflow you just want to be able to seamlessly switch between wired and wireless and this one really makes it possible and really easy add to that that it's incredibly fast with its transfers the 60 megapixel jpegs are almost as fast on the computer as the raw files via the cable so that's a big plus and it works great in our setup Oh, I believe that. Yes. And a week is coming. Okay, set, num set number one, a strip light with the light tools grid. Now the light tools grid are really nice because they're actually grayish and it means that we can literally just steer the light towards the model with a very narrow grid. But because they're gray, they don't take away a lot of the light that normally a black grid would do. So I love that grid. And you also saw it in the video, by the way. We did it with the grid and without. And you can actually see that without the grid, the light just spreads everywhere. And with the grid, it just gives you that beautiful, almost vignetting-like effect. Now, the cool thing about this setup is because we place it really close to the model, you get a really rapid light fall-off. So that means that on the backdrop, it looks like you use the second strobe. But in essence, you only use one strobe from the front. So that saves you a lot of setup time. But also, when you walk around your model, it just looks a little bit nicer if you can do it with one strobe. And of course, you get a nice shadow on the back, which makes the connection between the backdrop and your model. I don't like it when the backdrop is like really behind the model and the model is in front, like some sort of sandwich i always like them to be connected so a little bit of shadow absolutely awesome so that was set number one
set number two, a very, very busy backdrop from Click Pro Backdrops. I love that backdrop with all the letters. In this case, I wanted to make the model just jump out. So we're using one light source on our model. And later on, I actually added a blue gel from the back. Now, not only to give lens flare, because that's something we do a lot, and I didn't want to do that today, but I did want to play a little bit with that lens baby Omni system. So actually, when we added that blue light from the back, you get this beautiful like side lighting and it hits your lens. And when you have something in front of your lens from that system, and in this case, it's for example, something like this or uh, something like and this, you can really put it in front of your lens and create something cool. Like for example, if I do it now, I do it in front of the video lens, you get this really nice effect. So when you hit it on the light, you get this, see that sort of bubbles. It's, it's really cool. And I also have something like this. So put it in front and you get, yeah. So I, I really like those effects. So we were playing with that in set number two. Now, one of the things that you have to be careful for when you shoot this on F11, everything will be pin sharp. So when you work with the Lens Baby Omni system, it works really well if you shoot on wider apertures like 2.8. And that's what we actually did in the next set. Okay, a model and a chair, one light from the side, and at that point I actually stopped and I told the students, you know what, set up the lighting yourself. And what you see a lot is that often people choose for flat lighting. So that means if the model is looking this way and I got the accent light behind her, they will actually start placing the light in front of the model. So that means you have your accent light on the left, you have your main light on the left. Now what I like to do is do it differently. So have your accent light on the left and your main light on the right behind the model, creating some sort of a Rembrandt lighting. So you get high contrast from the side and then it fills up with an accent light from, from the other side. And I think that works very, very well. Now I don't say that the other setup is wrong, it's just more flat. And the cool thing is when you understand your lighting and you see both setups in one shoot, you can actually next time determine, do I want it from that side and create that nice look, that more, uh, let me say commercial look, or do I want to go for the more extreme look from the other side and you just move your lights around. And I think in a workshop, that's the most important thing, just opening up people's eyes, that when you move yourself or you move your light, you have 100% control, uh, control over your contrast and the look of your shots. So that's a very, very cool trick to learn. Just move your light. And the nice thing is whenever I do it and I let students set it up, they always choose somehow for the safer side. Go for the dangerous side. It's cooler over there. Okay, final setup. We wanted to do something special. Now, when you build a set, you often have to get accessories, you have to get stuff, and that's expensive, right? But we we work in a studio. We have a lot of accessories here. We have strobes, soft boxes, um, metal stuff, uh, chairs, whatnot, a, a reflector. It, it, there's so much stuff that we have here. So we decided, you know what, we're just gonna create a shot with our model between all the strobes. And then Melissa came in and she said, you know what, I have these beautiful boots. And I was just going like, hmm, they have to be on the picture, right? So let's find something where she can actually put her feet up and just be 
be really like a rock chick or whatever. Now, one of the things that I like when you shoot something like that is you want that arrogance and you want that power in. And when you shoot from a low angle up, you already get that majestic look. So that's what we actually did here. Put your foot up and just look awesome. And she started playing with her hair and we got some amazing shots from it. Now, the trick about this setup is actually that we're using a technique called light in light. Now, we did use it differently. So I'm using one light on my model's face to really create a spotlight, but everything else was black. So we had a strip like from the back giving her an accent, but still the front was totally black. And you know that I love to work with colors, right? So I thought, you know what, let's you do light in light. And I never did this before. It was the first time. Just use light in light, but not like what we normally do, like one small stroke and then a big stroke behind it, four stops down. So that means that if you go four and a half stops down, it's pure black. If you stay between four and three stops down, it just opens up the shadows. A little bit like you do in Photoshop or Lightroom with your shadow slider, but you do it with lighting. Much better. So instead of doing that big softbox behind a smaller light source, what I actually did is use a, um, an open reflector with a blue gel and aim it towards the ceiling. So now the whole ceiling is my new light source. So that means that I don't have any shadows and it's a really, really flat light source. So it opens up everything. And because it's blue, we got this really cool sense of, wow, it's like everything is blue except the face of the model. And that's the trick because we're using color checkers. We want to make sure that that face of the model keeps a natural tint. And in all honesty, if you think about it, the model's face was lit, for example, on F8. That extra light, that blue light, giving that whole hue of blue, is actually three stops lower. So in the face, it will register just a little bit of blue. But most of all, that blue is blown away by that main light source. So you only have to change your color correction just a little bit to get the face looking normal. In this case, I didn't because I actually love that look. So try to experiment with different light sources interacting with each other. And especially when you throw in color. Awesome. Okay, guys, that was it for today. Tomorrow, another workshop, Classical Masters and the lighting of Classical Masters. So we're going to use a lot of flags and cool lighting. But for now, if you like what we do, subscribe to our channel, leave comments below, smash that like button because we really like that. But most of all, tell other people about our channel so we can grow. See you again tomorrow. Bye, guys.